Okay, welcome back. We're talking about piping. So I want to do this the old way. All right. So I'm going to do an ls minus. I'm going to do an ls minus al uh, user bin, and I'm going to redirect that into uh, uh, user bin dot out, and then I'm going to do less on that thing. And then when I'm done, I'm going to remove user bin dot out. Okay, that was three commands, right? So the first one was an ls with a redirect, and then I type less. And then after I'm done, I, I want to throw the, the junk away, right? So that is the same thing as doing piping. ls minus al uh, user bin pipe. Less. That's essentially what that isn't that so much better typing one command rather than three? Because the first one was ls minus a all user bin redirect, and then we type less command on that file, and then we remove the file. Okay, so this is just easier. Cool. Okay, <clears throat> that way I don't have to clean up anything afterwards. So piping is cool. Now the question comes up is, does every command? except the standard in and the standard out like this? Well, okay, maybe not every command, but almost, how about commands that expect to be dealing with files? They do. Okay, like the app get command? Um, no, I, I, you know, redirecting the standard input into that, I don't know what it would do. I mean, but the copy command and all the rest of these guys, yeah, I mean, Almost all files except redirection. Okay, cool. Okay, so we need to talk about different types of things. So there's filters on page 61, depending on if you're on the hard cupboard book or the not. So God only knows what page number really is. But anyway, filters, you can find it. So there's a sort command. So let's do this again. Um, let's do... Um, Instead of al, I'm going to say uh, ls minus a. Uh, let's just do ours. Okay, there we go. So there's uh, ls minus a. And if I want to sort that, um, okay, I'll tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to remember how you can, if I said, uh, uh, let's see, um, bin and user bin. Okay, those are two commands. I mean, two folders, a bin com folder and the user bin folder. Now, the ls command is going to just spit them out. Okay, cool. So what I want to do is I want to see if there's any duplicates in there. So what I want to do now is I want to take the, so this is the contents of two folders simultaneously. I'm going to pipe it through less so I can see what the heck's going on. Okay, so uh, here's slash bin. And there's user bin okay hey by the way did you notice that when i redirected it um through this it, it made it one list rather than on the screen where it had multiple lists yeah i know the machine can figure out if something is being redirected and perhaps it's going to change its its formatting slightly so what i want to do now instead of having it pipe through less i want to do sort okay so it's going to take this and sort those guys because there could be some duplicates in bin and user bin. And of course, boop. Well, what do I, what do I have to do to be able to uh, slow this down so I can see it? Well, I'm going to pipe it through less. Okay. So, yes, you can pipe and then pipe again. So I'm doing the ls on two separate folders. I'm running it through sort, and then I'm running it through less. And so um, here's what we got. Now, to tell you the truth, if I, was, if I was hunting for unique ones, what do you think I, I mean? Because that's what I was actually trying, trying to find out if there was a, if there was something in here um, that was a duplicate. Okay. Well, there there is a thing after I sort this guy. There is a file called unique. I mean, a command called unique. Now, I want a unique would show me all the ones that that are unique. Okay, well, in this case, that's probably not going to help me too much because I want to know the ones that are not unique, right? So how do, how do I do 
the ones that are un different. Okay? So I'm going to use the minus D option, which will show me the ones that uh, are duplicates. D for duplicates. Okay? So the opposite of unique. All right, here we go. Well, there's a lot. In fact, I can't tell if that's rolled off the screen or not. I really can't tell. So how do you how do you fix that? Well, I'm going to pipe it through less one more time. So now we're piping an awful lot, aren't we? I'm taking the contents of bin and user bin. First, I'm running it through sort, and then I'm running it through unique, and then I'm running it through less so I can see it. Okay, here we go. So lots and lots of stuff. And it looks like the first one is AS, and it goes all the way down to which. Okay, just humor me. I'm going to take the sort out and do this without doing a sort. Hmm. It only gave me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It only gave me 12 items. Ooh. Actually, that was not supposed to work. Hmm. Okay. Well, what I was trying to show you, even though I didn't, what I was trying to show you is the, um, the unique command is specifically designed to look for those things that are adjacent to each other. So a practical limitation is you almost always have to do, do it with the sort command. So sort and then unique almost always, okay? In this particular case, because the ls command put it in, in sorted order anyway, it kind of screwed me up. But anyway, the bottom line is, yes, you do have to use sort because the unique command by itself only finds those things that are adjacent to each other. And if it's not adjacent, then they won't work. And therefore, that's what we need to do. Okay. So lots and lots and lots of piping. <clears throat> Um, so instead of me counting, like I did before, right? I did this and I go, I went up there and I went one, two, three, four. Well, what if I just want to know, um, how many, how many duplicates are there in there? I don't really care what they are. I just want to know how many. Okay. Well, there's yet another filter and this one is called word count. Now word count by itself, it's going to tell me the number of lines, the number of words and the number of characters. Okay, if I don't if I don't specify, it's going to tell me there's 12 lines, 12 words, and 92 characters. So I don't really need all that. So I only want one of them. So in this particular case, I want to pick lines, although quite frankly, words would have worked. So I'm going to do this again. Minus L. So I'm taking the contents of two different folders, and I'm trying to find duplicates. I'm running them through sort. And then I'm running them through unique with the minus D option, which makes finds the duplicates. And then I just want to count them. And so this should come out to 12. Okay, cool, cool beans. Whew. Okay. Hey, let's do this again without the all the filtering. Okay, I'll, I still want to do word count, but I'm I'm just going to do this. Okay. What do you think? What was the? What do you think the line count is for? It's going to be pretty big, right? 973. So out of 973 lines, 12 of them are duplicates. Cool. Now, those 12, for example, remember if I said, uh, like, the less command is one of them? Hey, remember when we did which? So it appears in both of these. And yet, when I did which, it told me specifically which one I'm using. Okay. So... If I wanted to use the other one, I would have to specify, hey, I don't want the standard one, I want the special one or something, okay? Whew. Okay. Now, the next uh, topic uh, is called pattern matching. Now, this is extraordinarily complex, and to tell you the truth, we're not, we're not gonna deal with much of it here. There's an awful lot of pattern matching things. If you ever were in the DOS days, you had like, you know, asterisk.txt, which means you know, find everything with a TXT extension, that kind of thing. So right now we're going to be doing pattern matching, but without any wild cards, we'll come back and we'll do wild cards later. But for right now, so here's what I want to do. I want to find, uh, 
we're going to do this guy again. Okay, except this time I want to find something in here. So I'm going to use the grep command. Grep isn't an acronym, but, you know, global regular expression pattern matching. Uh, but don't worry about what all that stuff means. So now I tell it what it is I want to search for. For example, I'm going to search for the word zip. So what that's going to do, it's going to take contents from the ls, I'm sorry, the bin command and the user bin command, combine them together, and then I'm using this filter called grep to find every word that contains zip. And there they are. So there's bun zip to and b zip to and b zip recover and gun zip and da -da 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 -da. okay, cool beans. Now there are an awful lot more you can do, but let's don't make things any more complicated. Okay, <clears throat> so let's do this again. I know I'm using this this example, and let's say, look, all I want is like the top ten lines. I'm gonna go ahead and do the sort one more time. I'm gonna do a sort. Whoa, not with two T's. And all I want is the top ten lines. I don't care about anything else. Well, there's a, there's a cool thing you can do that. It's called head and tail. So if I said head, that means give me the top ten lines. Cool. If I said tail, that's going to give me the bottom ten lines. Kind of makes sense. By the way, you, if you want to tell it, instead of ten being the default, what if I said tail, and then you, you could tell it... Um, minus and then uh, like 20 and that'll give me the last 20 of them cool all right so head and tail is a cool way of not seeing everything because maybe you don't care about everything after you've sorted and done all the things you want to do i just want to see the top 10 or the bottom 10 or whatever the thing is okay this next one is a little weird so just bear with me what happens if I want to have something redirected to a file and then also redirected to an application at the same time. You know, if you were looking this up from a plumbing perspective, okay, <laughs> we got the we got standard input going into a program, and then we have the standard output coming in the program. But what I really want to do is split. I want to take the standard output and split it into two. One of them goes to a file and one of them goes to an application. So just like in plumbing, this thing is called the T. Okay, so let's try this. Um, if I want to, um, well, okay, let's just do one. So if I do this, if I said ls, uh, let's do uh, user bin one more time. And then I say, T output dot uh, txt and then redirect that into grep zip. Okay, I want you to think about this a minute. So the T command is like a pipe fitting, it's splitting the output. So the T command says, oh, if that's a file, then go ahead and put it in the file. So since I'm the filtering is appearing last, all of user bin is going to show up in output. But the only thing that's going to show up on the screen is the ones that match zip because it's splitting the, the input output. I'm sorry, splitting the output into two pieces, one of which goes to a file and one of which goes to zip. Okay, kind of sort of makes sense. I know that's a little weird. It takes a little take take a look at the book. Take a look at the examples. I promise this will make a little bit of sense as we go along. If I was to, to rearrange this, and instead of doing it that way, I would say t grep uh, zip, and then I'm sorry grep zip, and then do a t. All right, so now the zip is our the grep has already occurred, so the file is only going to contain the two lines. Okay, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark, so you know the drill.